sex role like proper game of thrones sex role <laughs> ah i have not i have not i'm not looking forward to it but i know it will eventually happen i don't know how i'm going to take it or how i'm going to do it but i have not if i have done it just that's what i've done Hi guys, this is Jessica Onome Urishane, aka Jessie Coco, and you're on to Coco Talks. Jessica <laughs> Urishane is um, someone who has always known what she wanted to do for the longest of time, and then she has always geared all her energy towards it. She's a graduate. <laughs> I like to say that now. It sounds sweet. Then when we were in school, it wasn't important. But now that we're out, it's always so nice to just pop it out. Oh, hi, I'm a graduate. So, yes, she's a graduate of um, Theatre Arts, the University of Lagos. She's an actor, has always been acting since as young as nine years old. Um, she's a young adult, you know, this is adult with this scam, and then literally every day for the past couple of years, it's been hitting on me, you know, as your independency grows and all the bills, you know, basically trying to navigate myself through this life and be the best version of myself. Yes. My childhood, well, I feel like from how I still sound, I still sound like a child a lot of times. It's not something I'm proud of, but it's just something that has stayed. And then most times I try to home form all this hard girl, hard girl voice. It doesn't work. Um, so as a child, I was very protected, very protected. My mom was very protective, but she was hardly around. And then I would say that she always used to let me get away with stuff because I feel like she was trying to compensate her absence. So I was a brat growing up. I think that's the cocoa of it. And I was a very spoiled brat. And even till today, I don't know how I just toughened up. I think also going into university and being on my own for a while, I just had to toughen up and be more independent. Yes, so that's really what I was saying about myself. Wait, how did I get in there? I got in there. Well, I like to always mention the fact that I started acting from as small as primary school, then church. Church was very important. And then when I was about nine years old, I, f I found like a couple of individuals and they had this great idea. Even though I would say that we never got to really achieve it as big as it could have been. We just had these two young guys that wanted to come into an industry. You know, they wanted to create a teenage entertainment industry with teenagers and young children. That was the content they wanted to create. I would do anything for you. And I did. And then I was still in secondary school as I think just one then. And then they just bring us together, a couple of us still within that age range every Saturday. For me, it was just like an extracurricular activity. It was just something I used to do on Saturday that, oh, on Saturday, I know I'm going for a rehearsal. And they would always meet and have rehearsals. They would always come up with storylines. Like the little skits we have nowadays, yeah, they'd always come up with that. And then we just rehearse. And then a couple of weeks into it, and then we brought cameras, we'd film it. So it was on YouTube. As time went on, they got an executive producer. It was on TVC for a bit. And then the same guys produced the first film I featured in. I think that I can't remember the name right now. Yes. And then I think I still did two other movies with them until I got into university. And then I entered the main market and I started going for auditions, you know, jumping from one place to the other, going for auditions. And yeah, yeah, that's how it's been so far, basically. Unfortunately, it's not something I'm proud of, but I wouldn't want to point fingers, but I would attest to the fact that it doesn't really have structure. Because if I, I'm in an industry for how long and I'm not under your guild, I don't know. And I don't know where you guys move your meetings. I, don't, I really have no, I know there's an actor's guild, but I have no information about it. No social media, no platform, no, no structure. No structure basically, or maybe I'm speaking because I don't know, maybe there's some sort of structure, but if there's some sort of structure, it hasn't gotten to me and I feel like we should be reaching out to new actors coming to the industry to join, um, make, make them register for the guild. So no, unfortunately, I'm not a member of the actors group in Nigeria. 
leadership leadership that it still comes back to structure you understand um i don't know so much about the leadership but i feel like i feel like um there's still so much that should be done to get our movies out there because we have a lot of amazing stories we have writers we're supposed to be reaching out you know going like reaching out to people to invest let's, let's not even go far amongst ourselves like um, in nigeria there are lots of people that are looking for what to invest in but because there's no structure there are lots of people that have beautiful stories beautiful ideas but they don't have any means to bring it to reality so yeah that's what i said my relationship with her is very professional she's a very hard-working woman she knows what she wants and myself as a professional i try my best to give her what she wants because she you know she has an idea of how she wants the show to go so i try my best to meet up to her expectations because that's what i'm paid for yeah so we have a very beautiful um professional relationship hmm people that inspire me in the movie industry uh i would say if like different people and different aspects of the industry because I have actors that inspire me and I have producers that inspire me because long term I would want to produce my own shows, my own movies and stuff. So I have a couple of producers that I look forward to and it's quite amazing that a whole lot of them are women. We have Funke Akindele, we have Moa Budu, we have Miriam Joko. So those are women I look up to in, in terms of production because they've been able to successfully produce some of the best movies and series we have in the industry right now and then for acting for acting i like to say and say the etim because she's a fantastic actor i swear my mommy she's amazing you know her range characters i can't even do that do you you want to get to that through training or oh, some experience which is why I say I've not met my favorite movie yet because there are so many characters to play, there's so many characters I'd love to play, and she inspires me because she has been able to take off some of those characters. Yes. I'll say one major struggle the actors face is how it's how um most I won't say all most times you are called for an audition and then you put like a production house puts a public notice for an audition and then there are only like two slots left like literally just two roles you want to cast and you've already done table casting you've already called who is who and who is not and you've already filled up the cast and then you bring out that open notice and then people come as early i kid you not i've gone for an audition as early as 4 a.m and there were people there from the night before it's that terrible and then at the end of the day most of the times it takes too long by the time you're meeting your the person that auditioned you you're already tired from standing outside some production houses might not even provide comfort like canopies you're standing under the sun drinking pure water you come in you're looking terrible you cannot perform to your full ability and at the end of the day there's really no role for you so like that's one thing young actors face basically that i would like to talk about well this is unfortunately very true it's unfortunately very true that even till this very day there are producers that would not give you roles unless you sleep with them fortunately for me i have not had a direct contact i would say my earliest contacts which is something i've not really spoken about was when i was i was still a teenager i used to follow you know i mentioned how i met some guys that were especially the whole teenage industry thingy and we used to create stuff here and there and then he was also an editor so most times i would follow him to location and one particular day i followed him to a set and then we met like the location manager that was his friend and everything and i've always been big for my age so i was like 15 then but i'm pretty sure i looked 19 20 so maybe uh, maybe i'm just making an excuse for him and then he literally cornered me 
came to the toilet and wanted to harass me and touch me. I was like, I was wrong with me. That in fact, I should go and pack my box. There is a location manager that any production that um, any production that he is location manager that will give me a role, these kind of things. So things like this happen. And I kid you not, there are girls that will actually fall for that. And at the end of the day, what role will they give you? They give you one waka pass role after you giving them your body. They just say, ah, director, make she just walk up past, enter the space. Ah, director, make she do palace meet. So it's quite crazy. That's a little scale. So imagine bigger scales. So it's sad, but true. Uh, except that incident, except that incident I mentioned with the location manager and the bathroom, trying to search me and stuff, no. But then I've reached out to some producers. And you know, we're girls now. We know these things, basically. You know when they say, oh, sir, I'm an actor. I tell me will come and see me in my office, all these kind of things, all those kind of weird corner corner ways that they will be here. So I just cut it off immediately. So far, so good. Sex role, like proper Game of Thrones sex role. <laughs> ah, I have not. I have not. I'm not looking forward to it, but I know it will eventually happen. I don't know how I'm going to take it or how I'm going to do it, but I have not. Maybe I've done it. That's what I've done. Yes, I'll take it. If it's. If, because like, as as the sexual, there's, there are so many other things with the character. Do you understand? So I'm going for the character and then if it involves the sexual. People are very professional about this. They do these things abroad when they are all naked and stuff and they carry it on well. So I'm sure it's something that can be properly handled. Obviously, there's preferential treatment because big actors, they have a lot of things to contribute to the production. They have their following. There are some of them that have millions of followers. So as a producer, as a director, as the crew for the production, you'd obviously want to treat them special compared to someone who, who just started. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Mm, regarding the maltreatment, I personally, I've seen this happen and then uh, it's not something that I as a person can stop. But what I always tell myself is that I, I mentioned how I want to produce my own my own um, content in the long run. So I just take note of all these things and I just tell myself that this is the kind of producer I do not want to be. I do not want to be a producer that does not make um, make um, provision for my extras, little as an extra. The fact that they have a little role, they are important to the movie and they deserve such respect. They deserve to eat proper food. They deserve respect. So I as an individual, I've just taken it upon myself to just learn from these experiences, the ones I've, um, the ones I've been a victim of, or the ones I've witnessed, and just that. Oh, when I become a producer, this is something that I'm not going to take lightly. This is something I want to change. But in all, not that to change anything. In all, I'll just say that it's not necessary. It's not necessary. They're human beings. Sincerely, initially, I used to be very, very because I'm quite emotional. You know, I talk like a baby and stuff. It's not all facade. Some things really get to me as much as I'm big, well, I can break down and cry. And then, like, I'll just get some comments as little as walking down the street. Sometimes I go to Yabba Market and I'll say, ah, oh, my size, ah, oh, horrible, all those kind of things. And it's always so annoying. But I think I've just become very comfortable in my own skin because I told myself, I was like, this is how I am right now, so I'm going to be the best of it. And if I'm not happy with it, I'm going to change it. So as until I'm ready to change it, I'm going to just be the very best version of me. So that's it. I'm just confident right now. Oh, I would say I'm confident with my clothes on. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't think I'm that extreme. But whatever works for you, whatever you're most comfortable in, they're comfortable in their own skin all that me i'm just comfortable with my tight dress my short skirt maybe one of these days a bikini photo but not like all around the thing you know? well yes even though i'll say not anymore even though i'll say not anymore because now i'm obviously a full-fledged adult but when i was a teenager when i was a teenager oh my god it used to be so crazy like i would literally be walking on the road and i'm like i don't know anything i'm just 13 14 15 16 which is one of the reasons why I really kept my baby voice because I liked when they would roll down, wind down their like this and I would say, hello, yeah, good afternoon. I'd be like, ah, oh, small girl. Yes, yes. There's, also, there's some sort of psychology to all that. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. Great. Like, a lot of our actors and actresses, they are very fashionable and very fashion forward. And yes, very good. Very good. Yes. <laughs> Um, like a celebrity, celebrity, or like a normal individual. Ah, 
I don't say oh yay, yay. But maybe Lacon should go and get new shoes because the shoes you wore to the headies was. Uh, I didn't say anything. No. I didn't say anything. Um, they don't know a lot about me. Um, uh, I've mentioned reserved. I'm very reserved. Um, I procrastinate. Oh God, I'm terrible. I'm I'm terrible when it comes to that. It's something I'm trying to change. Uh, I can't sing. Talk addicts, you should know this. Me friend, do 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 do. You probably didn't know that I could sing. I have this angelic voice. I used to be in the choir. I don't know what happened. But the music industry did not really kick off for me. It was just not something I was going to go into professionally. But yeah, I can sing. Um, I like cooking. Not until recently. For a long time, I used to be very lazy when it comes to this kitchen chores. But I like cooking. I, I, like most times when you see me on my phone, I'm seeing, I have pages I follow where I'm seeing different delicacies. Yes, I like kitchen stuff. And then I'm the last child. So I told they don't know me as a celebrity. So you might just see me on the road of uh, where we stay. And then I'm just looking very tired. I'm going to buy tomatoes and pepper on the road. They don't know me as a so I don't know why. Yeah, so yeah, that's basically it. Ah! Jesus, where we going? <laughs> Um, if wishes were horses, well, I don't know who's going to watch this movie. I don't just come in. Hello, come on. Let's do. Uh, my dream role has to be something dramatic because I like drama. I'm a drama queen, so it has to be something dramatic. I always picture something gang gang, you know, one crazy character, a character that people that um, that people can relate to. Do you understand? But she's crazy. I don't know, let me know, come and be writing the story here. Uh, and then dream actor, like the actor that should be in it. Sh should it be Hollywood or Nollywood though, maybe Bollywood. Can it be, can it be anywhere in the world? Ha, my husband, John Boyega. <laughs> yeah, something John Boyega would be nice, something international, something Netflixy, you know, and chills. Um, but if not John Boyega, someone in Nigeria. We have a lot of fantastic actors in Nigeria right now. Um, maybe Chimeze Imo is a fantastic actor. They have a whole lot of them, or older ones. Um, Mamsi Noah. Yes, you know, some living in bondage kind of. Ooh, something in there, yes. Um, but yeah. Yeah, something like that basically something dramatic and with maybe John Boyega <laughs> maybe he just over you know <laughs> but okay I'm not just going to dream too much yes or Chimeze Imo he's a fantastic actor yeah Timini there are a lot of them Nigerian or international okay that's our international John Boyega I mentioned his name already I used to be in Idris Elba but he got married I don't do married men, so John Boyega for now until he breaks my heart. And then Nigerian, I don't know. Every time they ask me this question, I never get a Nigerian like on the spot of the moment. It's now later on I remember that. Oh, um, Nigerian, uh, Kule Remy, not bad. Yeah, yes, I am familiar with the BBN show, of course, now. Uh, uh, why not? It's a very huge platform. Yay! If you guys want to call me, call me. I'll be there, you know. <laughs> of course, definitely. Yes, of course, definitely. Oh no, because um, that's that's not my person. Do you understand? It's not my, I'm, not a, I'm not that kind of person. And then me, I like when I see people doing it, I always think that, ah, my brother will be at home watching me. My brother is like my daddy. I'm like, hey, so my brother will be at home seeing me do all this? No, definitely not. Definitely not. No, I do not plan to have sex on the show. Nobody. I'm not really a fan of that. I've not even, my, my father is late and I've not tattooed his own name on my body. And you, from nowhere, what have you contributed to my life? Except pop culture, but no, no, none, none at all. Well, I would say, I would say that um, it's, 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 I would say there's a whole, there's a large play of hypocrisy around that, basically. 
I have no problem with that. I have no problem with it to act as an individual. But I have the problem I have is with the hypocrisy. I remember when Bob Risky started off. I remember when Bob Risky had like two hundred and twenty thousand followers. I mean, that was the time I got notice of him. And then people were always insulting him. Ah, blah 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 blah. Today he has over three million followers. So who is following him? So where is all the criticism coming from? When you are following him, you're liking his pictures. When he, he or she, permit me, when she does a giveaway, you're sending your account number, and then you now come and condemn it. It's just a large play of hypocrisy that I can't stand. Um, at the moment, I'm focused on content creation for my Instagram because. I think it's becoming some sort of side hustle so I'm focused on that I'm investing more in that and for acting I just got off a seven months long project so I'm taking my time little things are coming here and there but I think now I know what I want so it's easier for me to know if I want to do this or not but meanwhile I'm doing my content creation because that's another source of income yeah so presenting the next five years still acting Hopefully, I would have had enough funds to um, produce maybe my first feature film and short film in the next five years. Um, hosting my own TV show, or maybe not, maybe a YouTube show, a big YouTube show with a huge following, and creating content. Yes. Oh, to my fans, my upcoming test fans, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for supporting me i get loads of messages from people saying oh i want to be like you from people asking me for advice and i'm like hey who am i do you understand but to the best of my ability i'll try as much as possible to reply your messages definitely run a project that will make us meet do you understand so, um, a certain kind of level but i would say thank you very much and then if you're a thespian i would say keep doing it you're in the right place and then um, recently I got I got this DM about a girl that said oh she wanted to leave science class and venture into art class and that she wasn't doing well in sciences but that and she asked for my honest opinion and I told her that if that is what you want to do do it it's all about what you want to do I've always known what I wanted to do I remember after all my jam and everything when my my, my brother literally called me he took me out I was like are you sure you want to carry this result and go and study that and I told him yes because I knew what I wanted Thank you so much guys. I had an amazing time on the show. It's still Coco Talks and I'm still your girl, Jessica Urishane. Okay, Jessica Coco.